Jay Leno's garage. Today, something completely different, legend cars. What is a legend car? Take a look. Let's meet the man responsible. He'll explain to us how this whole thing works. Uh, Graham Smith. Graham, come on in, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, you're the grandson, right? Yes, sir. Uh, right, okay. Who, of course, yes, sir. Yeah, he's a, a legend. Certainly, he's in the Hall of Fame and all of that. Now, obviously, <laughs> these are a lot smaller than regular sized cars. Uh, but the idea is to give young people, or anybody really, who wants to go racing, a chance to kind of just learn the ropes and learn how cars handle without having a big expensive stock car to, to do. Absolutely. Um, okay, so so how did this idea originate? How, how old are legend cars? I mean, I, I know it's been around for quite a while, and it's one of those things I always kind of, I, I'm always working weekends, so I don't get a chance to go to a lot of events, so I, I, I know about it. So, so tell us how you got started and how uh, the whole thing began, basically. My grandfather, uh, Bruton Smith, and right. Humpy Wheeler, the former vice president of Charlotte Motor Speedway, got together and wanted to figure out a way that they could keep race fans entertained outside of racing season. And uh, well, in their, in their situation, NASCAR season. So they figured out that all these NASCAR fans had bass boats. And so they did some math. They wanted to figure out how, how expensive is a bass boat. Back then it was about 10 grand. Right. Uh, this was, they were working on this in the early 90s. So 92 is when the actual company was founded. Right. They figured they could make a car for 10 grand. And so they went out to junkyards, found a bunch of actually Toyota Celica parts, mainly for the brakes and suspension. Uh, they found an engine out of a Yamaha bike that uh, they used for a long time, a 1200cc engine. Right. And then now we have a upgraded version of that. But back then that was, that was how it ran. They figured they could sell them. They sold a bunch of them. They made it the size that it is so it could fit in the back of an F-150. Right, they okay. They wanted to be able to do it without a trailer. So and, uh, bigger than a go-kart, smaller than a race car. Right, yeah. Sort of the idea. And I love the idea that they use motorcycle power plants because to me, pound for pound and efficiency, motorcycle engines get so much power. Absolutely. From just, you know, 750, 1,000, 1,500 cc's, whatever. Uh, really cool. So does it use the the Yamaha or the motorcycle transmission as well? It does, this is the same, this is actually a 900cc FZ09 Yamaha mm -hmm. motorcycle engine transmission built into the actual case. Uh, it's running a liquid cooled three cylinder and uh, yeah, it's making about 130 horsepower. Okay, so when you guys build, so you build the whole car now, right? We do. I, I think you guys are like the world's biggest builder of race cars, isn't that correct? We are, yes, yeah, 7,700 cars built just around that number. Wow, okay. So do you buy used motorcycle engines at this point? Do you buy them brand new? How does we have work? an engine deal with Yamaha themselves. Uh, okay. They actually ship the engine straight from Japan over here and, uh, and let us work on them. It's, uh, it's a very unique situation. Yamaha does not have that deal with anybody else. Okay, so when you, get, when you go legend racing, everybody has the same car. So Everything. There's no, nobody's putting a, you know, the big Kawasaki six-cylinder in or any of that. No. <laughs> so there's a set of rules, and the rules are, Yamaha power plant, wheelbase can only be this. Okay, all Absolutely, right. the, actually, there's very few things you can do to modify the car. You right. can change your basic setup, your suspension, your, um, and really it's just tuning. It's, it's camber, it's, uh, it's tow, it's different things like that. The engine's sealed top and bottom. What's the body? Is it supposed to be 35 Ford? Is that about what 34 it is? 34 Ford Coupe, oh, 34. Okay. same generation Chevy front end. This is right. the most popular way this car is configured with okay. our racers for some reason. They can like you get the, a different body? You can. You can do a Chevy body. You can do. A, you can do a sedan. I race a sedan. I like to have a little bit more room in the car. Right. Sedans a little bit longer. Um, Fords, Chevys, Dodges. We don't do the Dodge anymore, but for a while we did. Okay. But it's, yeah, all cars from that generation. Now, now Joey Logano. We had him on the Tonight Show a number of times, and on this show, and he started with this, didn't he? He did. So. Yes, he did. Still has one. Still drives it quite often. Yeah. Well, so the idea is to get budding young racers. Maybe they come up through go karts. And this is that transition before they move into the full, full size stock cars, correct? Okay. Absolutely. Just given the you know the rear end being fixed and everything being so twitchy, it's, it teaches you what it's like to drive a high horsepower car. Now motorcycles usually have six speeds. That the same transmission. Six or? speed. Okay. Okay. All right. Sequential as well. Same as a motorcycle. Right. Right. Just pound it and just boom, boom, boom. Yep. Right. Very good. Of course, single seat. What do they weigh? What are they about? 
1,100 pounds, 1,200 pounds? Right on the money, 1,100 without the driver or fuel, but 1,230 pounds wet okay. with the driver in it. So if somebody wanted to go into racing, they could call and buy one of these. Like, what, what would this cost? This is $18,995 out the door. Well, that's, I mean, to go racing, you can't go racing for that. That's, yeah. I think it's a really clever idea because stock car racing in the beginning was fun because they were stock cars and guys would modify them. Right. And then it got to the point where the cheating got so stupid. <laughs> you know, you know, smoky unit, all those guys. It just got so expensive. So to go back to something like this, but do you find guys trying to cheat with these two? Do you catch that? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. There's definitely people that try and push the envelope. We don't call it cheating, though. It's innovating. It's Innov innovating. Innovating. Yeah, it's innovating. innovating. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So so they get they get fined for innovations. There's some say? fines. There's some race penalties. We're all you know. We figured the the stricter you be with the rules, you know, the easier it is for anybody to get involved. The moment right. you can outspend somebody, the right. moment that this is no right. longer racing, it's a it's a money race. But is it only is it only innovating if you get caught? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, look, that's, that's ref so doesn't see it. Then that's the ref so NASCAR. It. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's really NASCAR just on, on a smaller level that, that people can afford. And I imagine it's hugely popular, isn't it? It is. It is. We have, uh, we're in, gosh, 40 states and uh, 30 countries now. Okay. Yeah, we're all over the world. All right. So that's it. <laughs> it's, it's very cool. So like you say, you can't do anything to the motor. It's completely stock, right? It's sealed up. It is sealed. You can option for an aftermarket clutch, and that's for feel purposes only. I, I like that clutch. It's a yeah. little different from Henson, but outside of that, it's... Well, just knowing a lot of motorcycle racers, there's cams and everything else, but you can't do any of that here, right? No, we do. Now, we do a little bit of work to the engine when it comes in for mm -hmm. you. There, there are new cams in there as well. Oh, okay. Um, there's new head gasket. Uh, stuff just to make it race ready, but right. as well as you know, it's a drivetrain. It's not a chain drive anymore, so we right. put a coupler on there as well. Do you run it on on pump gas? Pump gas, pump 93. Oh, just regular 93. Okay. Yep. And what's top speed? What, what kind of? You can see them get to, especially in the draft on a on a road course. You can see them get about 115. And they're pretty tight courses, aren't they? Usually, yes. You, you'll yeah. see some people get a little, I mean, I, I see some of the guys in Europe run them on tracks that you would never catch me driving them on, but I think it's incredible how they can handle a short wheelbase, high horsepower car like that. And what are the brakes? The brakes are Will motorcycle Woods. brakes as well? Willwood. Uh, they got actually oh. drums in the rear and discs in the front. Oh, you know, drums yes. in the front? They're really trying to save Yes, it, really trying to, wow. trying to be that old school driver. <laughs> That's, well, it doesn't weigh anything, so I, I can imagine. All right, and, and are you allowed to modify brake boosters and stuff? There's, I mean, you can kind of just play with brake bias and different things that you would in any other sort of race car, but uh, as far as performance enhancing equipment, none of it. I know Joey has done it. Do most people make the transition or are the guys who just love this and stay in this? You've got a pretty even split. I mean, we have, uh, we have a very stark number of people in, in cup racing now that started out in these cars. You've got Chase Elliott. You've got, uh, you've got Austin Dillon, his brother Ty. You've got the Bush brothers, right. Joey Jr. even, Dale Jr. But there's also a lot of people out there that just like racing for fun and you're not spending a lot of money, like you said. And how many cars in a race? Oh, we, on a quarter mile oval, which is where these predominantly live. Now they, they'll run road course and dirt, but a quarter mile oval, you have about 20 to 25 cars. Okay. And a lot of rollovers and... Here and there, um, yeah. you know, with a fully built steel roll cage, you feel pretty good about rolling over on your right. head. Okay. But um, nobody likes to be upside down. We, we try and keep them uh, all four tires on the ground. Well, obviously we can't take this thing out on the street, so that's why we keep showing this footage. But let's show just how crazy it gets out there on the track. Take a look. Christensen wow. to the upside, oh, and there goes. Uh -oh. And yeah, Harvick. Yeah, yeah. Look at this mess. Whoa. Oh, it's still a mess. Oh, it's a big mess. Red, 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 red. So right there, the 17 and the 64, chain reaction, accordion back. Now there they go. Norfleet, this is out of two. Couple of corners before it all breaks loose. Norfleet, oh, Norfleet gets bumped by Jorgensen, pushes up into wrap. That gives Bolin the chance, oh. but then as he is on full send. Into the back bumper of the 32, four wide, down into the corner, that's not gonna work. Jorgensen spins, Bolin into the wall. Oh my, we got a wheel going and went all over the place. This one's big. Among them two battling up the hill, three wide, Hunter Jordan in the middle. And just, just drives it down to the inside wow. and finds Roby. See him going into the corner, kind of back towards the end of the pack there. Oh, wow. 
holding it off. Oh, oh and look at this. We got one spin and two of them spin. So there's McCormick, you're saying, in the 19, or yep. it's another 19? That's, that's no, McCormick. McCormick. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a hit. Side by side for the lead coming off of two. One is around. That's the 88 of Rusty Young, and we've got a massive pile up there on the back stretch. And really, this is also just sort of a modern version of the quarter midgets that used to run in the 30s, you know, right. the Miller, those cars, and, you know, the shifting was right here in the center. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. And that's basically what they are, aren't they? Yeah. But nobody runs like a Harley engine or anything like that. It's all just the Yamaha. I, I encourage creativity just on the sanctioned side of it. We keep it in this engine. But I've definitely seen some people put some crazy stuff in these cars and have some fun with them. We have some street legal ones running around out there as well. Uh, <laughs> So how is this a street legal car? This one isn't. Uh, there's no, no, a lot of extensive work that goes into it. They'll, they'll adjust the ride height. They'll, uh, no, they'll but put... to be street legal as a car, it has to have been a car. Right. Like you take a 30. Well, it has a VIN number and everything. Okay. Yeah. All right. And where do you, where do you build these? Harrisburg, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, that's our world headquarters. And that's just the one factory that makes everything. That's all of it. For the whole world. Okay. The whole world. Very cool. Very cool. And who's your tires? Who's your tires? Semi-slick. I mean, I like Hoosiers. You always tend to think of Michelin and, and, and those guys. But are, are, are you exclusive Hoosier? We are exclusive Hoosier okay. for, for our sanctioning body, yes. Okay, so nobody can show up with a pair of Michelins? or No, and these tires actually are, are spec for U.S. Legend cars and NX. Okay. So this comes straight from Hoosier, built for us. And I imagine they're not too crazy expensive, are they? Because no. racing tires are, are nuts. Compar comparatively, I mean, when you compare it to a late model or anything yeah. like that, you're running way less expensive on the rubber. Yeah, yeah. Can we, uh, let's, let's, let's take a look at the engine here. Absolutely. Appreciate it. You got your pins. Oh. So you run through the gearbox, and how do, how do you convert? It's not chain drive anymore. It's a no, shaft. there's a coupler, actually. There's a drive shaft coupler okay. down right there. All right. Oh, I see. Here yeah. we go. You wouldn't think this engine put out that kind of... Enough torque to, to you know. We want to be better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> great. And how has the tracker been, been with these engines? Pretty good. How long did they last? A they, season, a couple of seasons? The what? first one from this generation, the first FZ09 that we put out, is still running today oh, okay. in a dirt series, mind you. Right. So uh, that serial number is still out there running. I mean, they come in for top ends more likely than not. Full rebuild will get you set for another season, season and a half, depending on how many races you're running a year, of course. Yeah, that's great. You do your own work, and drivers can learn how to fix their own cars. And yeah, yeah it's, it's very clever, because no, nobody's doing anything that makes racing cheaper or less no. expensive, not, not cheap, because yeah. it's just as exciting to watch. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and to me, when it's moving at a speed where you can follow it, as opposed to, you know, you go to Indy and you watch a guy goes by you 230 miles an hour. I mean, it, it, it's like crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going in the blink of an eye. Yeah, yeah. Our, our sanctioning body is, is called NX to be short for inexpensive. It's, right. it's literally built for that purpose. And there's a lot of passing and everything, isn't it? Unlike Plenty of passing. Yeah. With a spec car, you know, you get good, right. clean racing. And you really find out who can drive and who can't. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Funny. It's a driver's car. Do you use brake bias, the left back and forth? Absolutely. You, 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 you can adjust, adjust, you can adjust brake bias, uh, okay. for, especially for our oval racers. They definitely right. want right. to let that left front dig in better. How, how many, in a series, how many, how many races a year? Oh, wow. So, we, uh, so NX, the sanctioning body, runs in the U.S., right. Canada, and Australia. Right. Between those three countries, we're right about 2,000 races a year. 2,000? 2,000 wow, sanctioned okay. races a year. Okay. So right now, Winter Nationals is going on down in Florida. But this is pretty much a deal. You know, when I was a kid up in uh, Massachusetts, Every Friday, there'd be oval, you know, usually quarter midgets, that kind of this. I'm talking late 50s, early 60s, you know, and then it kind of disappeared. But now it's back with these, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah the local racer is what we go after. And you can't build your own legend car, can you? No, you can, uh, you can build a kit. We, we do sell it as a kit as well oh, with the do? engine okay. dismounted, and you can, uh, you can put it together, but it still has to fit our very stringent rules. Right, right, right. Boy, I think it's a really clever idea, and it, it makes money, and it's profitable. And yes, it does very well. Yeah. I mean, we've been in business for over 30 years now. And do you run a school, too, for guys that want to learn how to do this, men and women? There's actually a lot of, uh, a lot of private schools around that, uh, that will do it. You have uh, people across the country that set up these cars for customers, and they're happy to take you out of the track and drive. Do you get a lot of women? 
Yeah, actually, we are one of the most diverse racing series in the yeah. whole world. Because I meet more and more women that want to get into racing and stuff, you know. But it's it's so expensive, and you know, the connections and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And this is just a great way to do it. I mean, it, it just seems like a whole fun series because it, you know, the early days of NASCAR were really exciting to me with the Hudson Hornets and guys who drive to the race, you know, take off the hubcaps, win the race, <laughs> put the hubcaps back on, you know. And then of course it gets so sophisticated where it's like. Crazy, you know. Right. And and then you're you're back here to this where. So you figure, what would it cost you to race a season if you it is maybe fifty grand? I can tell you this way. I mean, you get into a couple of wrecks. You might be in those wrecks for a few hundred bucks a piece. Right. You've got maybe a set of tires or two. Yeah. And then uh, after the season's over, come in for a top end. I mean, you're in that whole season for somewhere around five, six thousand after buying the car. Now the cars always have to be complete. For example, if I've got a crumpled fender here. Can I not race next weekend until I fix that? You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I mean we do require that you know most of the car be covered up. I think we'll have some you know some exceptions other places when right. it comes to bumpers flying off. But if bumper falls off on the track with our rules, you gotta pull off, bolt a new one on. That's why it's the cheapest part that we make. Yeah. So these bumpers get used a lot. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fun that it's a 34 Ford. It know, is. As opposed to just making a miniature you know, modern NASCAR. Right. And what, what do you got coming up? What's, uh, is, is there a big finale race at the end of the year? How does that work? We have, uh, in the U.S., we do three different final races. So we right. have one for our asphalt oval racers, we have one for our dirt oval racers, and one for our road course racers. We'll have road course world finals at New Hampshire Motor Speedway this year. Right. We'll have asphalt nationals at Las Vegas Motor Speedway this right. year at the Bull Ring. And then we'll have dirt nationals at Fayetteville Speedway. You have you have races that compete in all three. We do. Oh yes. Is, this, there like, is there anybody who's won all three? I don't know about winning all three. Those are two. Those are three very different types yeah. of driving. I'll I'll say that uh, Kyle Larson seems like my pick to be able to do something like that. But yeah. this is uh you know this car was designed to be able to run all three from its inception, and it was you don't need to have a purpose-built road course, dirt, and asphalt car. Just tinker on it for an afternoon get it set up for the next race and go run it. Did it take you guys by surprise how successful this turned out to be? Absolutely. Did it seem like, hey, we'll build some of these and see what happens. Then, I, oh my God, you know. We, we were blown away at how quickly it became a development tool for drivers. That was the biggest thing. It was such a hobby racer's dream to begin with. And now it's an educational tool. I mean, this is, this is how so many of our current cup drivers have started out is in these cars. Yeah, and it's funny, and you learn about handling and it's like driving a Miata if you, when you're yeah. new, you know, you, you, you're you not going to overpower the car. So you learn about car control and how to drift and all that kind of stuff without going crazy. And, and you're not going to kill yourself in this thing. It's just no. a lot of fun at 115 miles an hour. That's that's plenty fast enough. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at a quarter oval and you're and they're right on each other, aren't they? Just, Absolutely. Yeah, bang, bang. yeah, they're trading rubber, trading paint, having yeah. a good time doing it. Well, very good. Hey, well, well, thanks. Thanks for opening my eyes to this. I, I, this is something new to me, and I, I find it really exciting. You know, we try to show all aspects of the automotive experience on this website, and this is one that I don't know how it slipped by me. I, I remember seeing it. Oh, those are kind of cool, you know. And then, but then I, I didn't realize how big and how popular it had gotten. So, so what's the what's the youngest they can race? Is it 15, 16? This car right here, 10 years old. Oh, 10 years 10 old. 10 years old, you can start in a legend car. Wow. Uh, if you're seven years old, you can start in our other flagship model, the Bandolero. Okay. That's a mid-engine go-kart platform with a full roll cage around you, the You should be able to walk first. I yes. Think yeah, that, we you I, think that is, I think that is a good criteria. It, it, yes. The toddler can make it into the vehicle. <laughs> as yeah, long as they yeah. don't have to be carried and I put into like, it. like seven. That's good. I mean, that... And is it like Little League? Do you just have crazy dads and yes. the pits yelling at you, you cheated and all it's, that? Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> I, it, you, you hear the craziest things you'll ever hear at a racetrack. When you introduce youth sports and then you put a $20,000 race car in the mix, right. things get a little bit heated. But yeah. it's awesome. It's, yeah, yeah, it's that, part that's of racing. hilarious. A lot of father-sons, mother-daughter teams and all that kind of Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. You yeah. have a pretty even split between people that don't take their own car to the track, that right. have someone bring it for them, right. and people that show up with it in the back of an F-150. We yeah. actually just had someone show up and win their uh, their race. We took a picture outside of our shop. They had their car in the back of their F-150. They drove it from New York all the way down to North Carolina, beat everybody, went home. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah. to me, that's what makes it fun. 
because you know somewhere it's going to get to the point where people remember the old days when you could put it in the back of the F-150 and drive still it. Can. Yeah, so you're there now, and that's great. Well, you know, anything that makes it more affordable, more fun, less expensive, and more exciting, I, I think it's just great. Well, congratulations. Thank congratulations you so much. Success. So, Legend Cars, check it out. Uh, a lot of fun. See you next week.